In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. I'm here with Dr. Eva Spach in the Movement Disorder Clinic in Bielitz Heilstetten. And we've got music here, we've got patients doing exercises, so, so what happens here? Well, Parkinson's is about movement disorder and one of the main problems of the patients is to initiate movements, to find the right rhythm and music is an excellent medium to find back to healthy movement. Many patients can have a lot more ability to dance uh, compared to walking or they can better sing than speak and uh, having a therapist who gives you some advices of course is very helpful but it's not mandatory you can do it also by yourself or there are internet sites where you get right advices and, and how does it really help is, is the movement getting better after you start dancing or exercising yeah, I mean, Parkinson's is getting more and more poverty of movement. Movements become smaller and slower. And so by training with the help of music uh, is aiding to, again, find larger movements, quicker movements and a better coordination. So um, there's another kind of therapy, which is an exercise therapy you call BIG, yeah. B-I-G, because it's, it's what we can see it here. Yeah. Well, this is uh, big, means big, it's about big movements and this is a very strong training. You have one hour with one single therapist, it's, it's quite strenuous, it's, it's a real exercise and you're bathed in sweat afterwards. But with this intensive training, you can find back to a more healthy movement. So you can really see that all those small movements, which are a sign of the Parkinson's disease, are getting bigger after you train it? Yeah, it's a matter of intensity. It's not done with one hour or a couple of hours. Uh, it must be intensive. We, it's, it's a minimum of 16 hours training with, for one hour with one therapist and in the uh, time frame of four weeks. So this is usually sufficient to really like, recalibrate the patient to find a larger and more healthy movement. So if we don't have any big trainer um, in the vicinity where I live or where our viewers live and we don't have any um, music therapy, yeah. can we do some kind of other sports in Parkinson's disease? I mean, I as a GP always recommend doing some nice walk with a dog or with the Nordic walking sticks. Is it sufficient as well? Well, GPs are usually very reasonable people and it's the same what we recommend, like Nordic walk, uh, jogging, swimming, um, cycling. So there are no real limits unless you're not able to do something. But uh, there's no reason to, to, to put yourself any, any limits in this respect. So yeah, this would be the next question. Are, are there any dangers involved in, in recommending sports and exercise to Parkinson's patients? Of course, I mean, if a patient has imbalance and is prone to falling, in this case, he should be careful not to do any exercise that puts him at risk uh, to, to fall. But apart from this, you can do any sports and you can even exercise uh, strong and, and uh, yeah, no. Dr. Ebersbach, we've got a patient with deep brain stimulation here. Hello, Heiko, thanks Hello. for joining us. Many patients put high hopes onto those uh, kind of surgery, the deep brain stimulation. So what kind of patients can use this treatment? Well, paradoxically, it's exactly those patients who have excellent drug effects. It's not those patients who have symptoms who can be, which can't be solved by anything, but it's patients which have a good drug effect, but which is unstable. So patients have response fluctuations. They turn from off where they can't move to on when they can move. And this up and down is very strainful for patients. And in this situation, a brain stimulator can provide more stable, more stable state of, of movement. So you, you can actually turn off the deep brain stimulation right now um, and we can see how your tremor is after switching this thing off. If you agree. So is it okay if we switch yeah, yeah. the pacemaker off? Okay. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> so you're using this device here and now you're turning off the brain stimulation. Yeah. This house. Yeah, and we can see the shaking is getting harder. Yeah. So this is very exhausting, this is anstrengend. Yeah, it's anstrengend, you can only sprechen it. Yeah, so the talking is difficult then, so you can switch it on again. Yeah, and this is the effect we see after the deep brain stimulation. Now it's getting better. Yes. 
It's really good that you that, that you've got this. Thing. Es ist gut, dass es ist gut, dass Sie diese Operation hatten. Ja. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The normal gold standard in treating um, Parkinson's disease is medication. So, so what kind of options do you have? Well, we still use levodopa, which was introduced into Parkinson's therapy 50 years ago, which is very effective, but after some years of treatment becomes unstable in its effect. So you need to you develop response fluctuations and patients get off. If they can't move, then they get on again and can move again. In the internet, you can now see a video of a patient with Parkinson's disease who is using marijuana to cure his symptoms, and um, actually, it seems to be quite effective. So, could marijuana be a treatment option? Well, actually, I think this is sort of a hype which is presently occurring with marijuana. Um, this video probably shows more the vanishing effect of one levodopa dosage more than cannabis um, effects. And uh, there are about four controlled studies assessing the effects of cannabis and Parkinson's, and they do not provide a very consistent effectiveness. So I don't think cannabis will have a very large role in Parkinson's treatment. Parkinson's disease not only affects old people, it affects younger people too, around the age of 40. And we got a viewer question from Nigeria. Jeremy Okpanachi wants to know if um, American football players or boxers have a higher risk of developing Parkinson's disease. It's, it's not the sole cause. It's not that you can say boxing or football playing has caused the Parkinson's disease in this individual person. But uh, talking about probabilities and risk, that, that's true. Dr. Ebersbach, thanks so much for inviting me today into your clinic in Heiko. Thanks, Werner. Thanks so much for showing us the Good. effects of the surgery. Mm -hmm.